Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 where I'm always excited to introduce this Terran player in the blue. It's the Admiral, Gumiho. But a rising Protoss star up against him. In the red, Nightmare, the Surgeon. His particular Protoss style helping him rise in especially this matchup. D, V, P. We got a best of three. Nightmare beating even the likes of Beyond very recently. Uh, so for the first time in quite a bit, I'm, I'm actually more interested to see Gumiho's opponent possibly than Gumiho himself. But either way, if you like good games, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we? No, I didn't have a joke. No, you can't just say TVP is a joke. That Leave it to the cop. <clears throat> 1,272 likes on this video, on this cast, on this series. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. I don't know what else I would do with my life. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Now, Gumiho, I was talking about Beyond, seems to have taken a page out of his playbook, which is one page, which is make barracks. Um, and Gumiho going for the three racks. This is a Wings of Liberty build. Back in my day. I'm sorry. Back. Back, back in my day, we would build three barracks marine, and then the strategy, we would just run up the ramp and hope they didn't force field in time. That was that was what top tier Terrans did back in like 2010 GSL. Strategies have evolved somewhat since then. You now no longer start, uh, both players have expansions. You start with 12 workers, and obviously you can't rely on the Protoss player fat fingering their force field on their Xbox controller, but. Nightmare has figured this out, I think. Uh, seeing the reactor racks, no factory units. Now, Nightmare has... He favors unit composition. This has become more and more of a trend lately. Protoss have... Throughout much of Legacy of the Void... Relied on actually having more economy than the Terran. In order to compete. As... In kind of a flip... Uh, Terran units more cost-effective with Ghost, Liberators, Widow Mines, Bio, Metavacs, um, Mules, and <clears throat> But Nightmare has, and stats recently as well, have focused so much on, on getting that right army composition. Now, you can't ever be out of position. That is a very thin line. Because since you're not getting that th quick three base economy, you don't have much to fall back on. So simply, never get caught out of position, and always have your splash damage ready. I know it sounds particular, but um, it is, especially against this mass biostrat. Will he have the Colossus in time? This game comes down to whether the Colossus is done. And the Chrono Boost is coming through. Nightmare seems to have timed this out about perfectly. There's no Colossus. He stims the Marines. The Colossus steps up to the plate. The Force Fields, well... We're about 98% of the way to being perfect, which is uh, approximately 0% effective. The Marines think Nightmare had an opportunity to trap those Marines in with him. I like how he put the Observer on the pervert pillar there, just so Gumiho wouldn't have a chance to snipe it off unless he like, guessed where the Observer was. Little detail, but still, the important point is less whether or not he was able to kill all those units and more that the Colossus shuts it down, literally with seconds to spare. If he hadn't chrono boosted that Colossus through most of its uh, production, the Marines very likely would have stimmed up the ramp. Now this is gonna get awkward. Uh, there's a proxy pile on here. Nightmare is adding on four more gates and this kind of gives away the trajectory of the build. Clearly Nightmare, he's doing a two base Colossus pressure. Uh, Gumiho now has to figure out how to deal with that, because even though he knows it's coming, just like Nightmare knew the bow was coming, that doesn't mean he has the tools to stop it. A bunker is good, but easily outranged by the extended Thermal Lance Colossi. Uh, the Marauders are, of course, helpful, but coming down the ramp is optimistic. Oh, Gumiho, no! God, oh, no! Oh, trying to, uh, the miscommunication there. The medevacs tried to save the marauders, but instead the force fields, the marauders just running around and the medevac just... Wow. That was a bit disastrous there. Um, 
So three marauders go down, a sizable part of the army, and Nightmare just kind of slicing away at the bunker, at whatever he can get a hold of. But starting to take real damage, knocks out the Viking. There was an observer deep behind enemy lines. Gumiho managed to land his third and is most of the way through building an orbital before Nightmare even suspected it. Has Nightmare seen the medevacs head out? There's going to be a conspicuous lack of bio units. He's been standing at the door um, and putting it on like, um, uh, essentially uh, slow cooking his way through everything at the natural. But the double drop, there should be a recall of cooldown, but recalling to the third could be disastrous as the Marines are on top of it. He does do so. And Gumiho's not going to... Oh, Gumiho just being a split second slow on the draw on some of these medevacs makes all the difference. And again, Nightmare's going to be able to reposition, come back and defend. Blink is not done. Don't expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. That Marine getting roasted. Just like Gumiho's drop micro so far this game. We're so used to watching Clem and Beyond with their smooth pickups that would steal your girlfriend and your wife. Um, that Gumiho just being slightly off. Um, it's noticeable. But makes him all the more human for it despite the humans he loses because they get slaughtered because they're a half second late on picking up into the medevac. So, where are we now? Site Delta. Oh, no, a bit more specific. Nine minutes in, about even supply. Three bases on either side. Gumiho's just now getting his armory. Nightmare's starting to fill in ruptures. Does he have three colossi? Only two colossi. So... Uh, not opting. He, he knows that Gumiho's been countering Colossi for a while. Already Vikings on the way. Multiple tanks. The Ruptors are for circumventing the Vikings. And they work better. Okay. No, the turret isn't that important. The Stalker's trying to blink micro their way into killing the turret. They may actually get it when it burns, but was it worth it? Emotionally. I don't know. <laughs> but the vision is very good here for Nightmare. He knows the map is dark in full of Terrence. So, doing whatever he can to light it up. I'm sure he's going to benefit heavily from the impending Spylon change uh, to have a little bit more vision. But the game will slow down. We're at that Cold War stage of TVP, where neither player has an army that can reliably fight on the open field. They both could win a fight right now. But if you take a misstep, whether it's for Nightmare into Siege Tanks or just a bad position against Bio, or Gumiho into Disruptors and Colossi, you're a half second away from disaster. And that is why we kind of slowed down at this 150-ish supply, is until you really get towards maxing out and you have your bases, there's no reason to risk the fight. At least most players won't risk the fight. Um... But once you get closer and closer to maxing out, there's really no reason not to be out on the map trying to get advantages uh, because you're not building anymore at home. 2-2 so on the way for Gumiho. Nightmare with a slightly quicker but just plus two weapons. The army went directly down the center of the map, the most unexpected direction. So Gumiho's attack onto the third. Nightmare completely out of position for this. The recall is not going to happen. Scrambles back. He had vision all the way to the north. He had observers everywhere. The only place he wasn't looking was right down the center. And now he loses a base because of it. This is disastrous for Nightmare right now. Has plus two weapons done, but Gumiho is maxed out. He lost nothing to take that base. Does he have any fourth command center? Um, I don't believe so. Kind of oddly. But he's dropping into the natural where some of the tech is vulnerable. Siege tanks on that high ground. Gumiho is jamming himself into a great position. Four siege tanks shelling their way. Marauder stimming in towards the natural. Plus two weapons done for Gumiho. Nightmare swinging around with a bunch of zealots up to the north side, trying to tank the tank damage. Gonna split those zealots up, 
Here come the disruptors. Point blank range. Wipes out half of his own zealots. Oh no! I feel like he's killed more zealots than he's killed Bio with those disruptors. I... Oh, nightmare. Just the double-barreled shotgun to his own legs. And Gumiho, the attempted breakout. He's able to maintain more than enough supply. Oh, watch out, watch. The disruptors. It's an absolute unmitigated disaster. Nightmare. Remember what I mentioned? When you go for this sort of composition, you can never be out of position. Well, I uh, don't think Nightmare's happy about it, but he did a, quite a demonstration. As with Gumiho able to get into a tough position, Nightmare unable to dislodge him with any sort of efficiency. The only saving grace right now is that Gumiho didn't have a fourth base. He removed Nightmare's fourth, effectively. He rebuilt another one. But Nightmare's down 25 workers. He's down 40 army supply. He's down two upgrades. All right, and he's down to his very last unit. Disruptor shot, looking for the ghosts. Clips a very unlucky marine. Another shot comes through, EMPs, but gets a triple kill on the ghost. That's something. Meanwhile, one widow mine slams into the Terran army as well. Shield battery overcharged, trying to protect the Colossus. Retreating with the Ruptor. Another, he, oh no, the Ruptor just wanders into the fray. The Zealot's coming down. That shot finds center mass, and that actually might be enough to hold for now. The Viking challenged here. And Nightmare will survive, but right now he's living through himself. Oh no. Widowmine hits a Ruptor. Another medevac is taken out. Gumiho unable to close it out. But Nightmare... It's not... It, uh... Mm. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, Gumiho throwing on advanced ballistics. Five marauders at a time. If there's an all-you-can-eat disruptor hit buffet and Gumiho decides that he's hungry, then maybe, as he doesn't have ship weapons to... Like, Nightmare is doing... He's building mass disruptor. And he just... You feel him lucky? He needs to land. The only hope here. And Gumiho is human. Unlike Maru, unlike Clem, and usually unlike Bion. Those are the only three Terrans. But Gumiho, like every single other Terran in the world, will get hit by disruptors, as we've already seen. Not all of them, not every time, but there's a dream here with Mass Disruptor. Well, a nightmare for someone. We'll see who. Advanced Ballistics about to complete Nightmare has done an uh, applaudable job of recovering in supply. He's even building phoenixes to preempt the ranged liberators. I don't even remember seeing him get a Stargate. Maybe he was thinking about an air transition or specifically for this. But Gumiho has solidified his position across the map. He's got five bases going on six. A nuclear missile in production. The liberators actually just beat the phoenix, which is kind of hilarious. Well, they do have plus one ship weapons, but... And now, <laughs> insult to injury. Well, injury to injury will now light up the probes. Nightmare is actually equal at army supply. His upgrades are terrible, but he has the ruptors. And those don't really care about your upgrades. Four disruptors. Only two liberators to help zone him out. Nightmare. Like, disruptor shot. Eh... Colossi trying, but they just can't burn through the 3 3 bio. He recalls I don't know, Kev. Point blank range Ruptors. He tries to target them down, fires off everything. Every Ruptor is taken out. Oh, he teleports from the frying pan into the fire. And. Well. G. G. 
Gumi Ho lays it down in game one with a pure bio build. <sighs> a hectic one. But nightmare. I, I can't believe uh, the least expected attack directly down the center. You can get so caught up in trying to cover all the angles because uh, Terrans with their medivacs and their liberators, sometimes their ravens, trying to sneak around the edges. But Gumio goes right down the center, which it's so obvious it became um, an actual 200 IQ move right there. Uh, and that brings us to game two with Gumiho. Up one to zero. Top left in the blue, Gumiho. And in the bottom right in the red, Nightmare. And I'm going to try to announce that a little more often as we jump into the games, because I know many of you are barely paying attention. And uh, while it doesn't really matter, it helps with that visualizing when you're zoning out in the background. And generally, uh, I, I, what I'm trying to say is like and subscribe, all right? I don't know, I go back and forth on announcing the players and their locations and what color they are on the map. Um, because I intentionally, and I, I do my best, we're breaking the fourth wall a bit here. I don't put the game times on the, uh, uh, in chapters or timestamps. Maybe I, maybe we could do that in the comments for, with like a spoiler tag, like that ever works, but... Uh, because if I just showed you the chapters of the games, then that would be a spoiler. Even more than sometimes the length of the video. And just to address this, you can't just put... Sometimes we'll put anti-spoiler games. This series might have an anti-spoiler game. You don't know. Um, not every time do we do that. Otherwise, that's a spoiler of, it, of itself. But you can't put, like, a black screen at the end. Because the way YouTube works is says, You clicked on this video, and how long did your eyeballs... Or at least your earballs stare at this video. And if there's a part of the video that no one watches, because it's a black screen at the end for anti-spoilers, they're like, well, people don't really watch uh, that much of your videos. So we're not going to show them to new nerds, because obviously we want to run ads on them. So uh, in case you're wondering, that used to kind of be a thing. YouTube worked a bit differently back in the day, from what I understand. Um, I barely understand it now, but I understood it less then. Um, but that is a pretty surefire way to kill the, the algorithm for your videos, is putting, like, dead air. So, we try to fill that air with a bunch of fancy-sounding words that make me sound competent. And that brings us back to my original point, which is, like and subscribe. And, uh, unlike Nightmare, you can blink. Wait. Now, okay, segue into Nightmare going Blink, something clever. Blink against 111. So far, just a couple Reapers poking forward. Gumiho doing effectively a TVT build here. But the only unit two probes have done. So Gumiho with the heavy tech, 3cc. A marked split from the previous game. He has not researched Interference Matrix. Which, if if Nightmare was doing the two-base Colossus yet again, that would be an issue. But just building Ravens. Like, three Ravens. Three Ravens? I don't know. I don't know. Like, even, like... So not researching Interference Matrix is not a big factor against Mass Stalker and Zealot. But it is odd that he's building three Ravens without even... It's only 50-50, the upgrade, so... It's just a bit odd he's not doing it at all. I'm wondering what he's interested in doing with these Ravens. As, uh, that's quite an investment. Did he... I, I think... Therefore I am. And also... Nightmare may have spotted them. Either way, he's going for the massive gateway charge lot into Templar archives. Trying to take advantage of the fact that, well, charge lots are heavy on the minerals, and Templar, at least high Templar archons, pretty heavy on the gas. Though he may just use them 
as Templar, which is something nightmare has certainly done before. Also, the probe. The vi Get your emotional support probes out. Always so valuable. And the Templar with feedback. They're not big fans of the Ravens. Yeah, he gets the auto turrets down right as the feedback comes through, though. Still, not gonna be... He gets two drones. Nope. Probes. All workers look alike to me. Rise up against the... <clears throat> and seize the memes of production. Storm on the way. So, Gumiho... Interesting with the Ravens. I'm not sure. It definitely helps on defense. Against a Protoss who's already prepared, though, I, I'm not convinced on its uh, offensive capabilities. Four Siege Tanks. Which I believe is enough to one-shot Stalkers. Don't quote me on that. And, yeah, well, he just keeps building tanks, which I do love. Siege tanks, one of my favorite units in the game. I just want the Brood War siege tank sounds. Uh, all right, I would pay an uncomfortable amount of money for that. And I didn't even play Brood War. I just think it sounds amazing. Observer kind of giving away its position here, but yeah, you're not attacking into that nightmare. <laughs> Well, he actually baits it out with the Stalker. Ah, masterfully done. But at the same time, the auto turrets dropped in. Gumio taking some advantage of the uh, attention split there. There are triple Templar in the Stormhammer prism. The Raven getting a few more probes. Five probes in total. Nightmare at 69, which is nice enough to perpetuate this. He is building more. More ravens heading out. How many? He still has three in total. What a curious build. But here, Gumiho moving out. The tanks. I'm sure he wants to storm on those tanks. Uh, again, though, the splash damage, I think, hitting just as many of his own units. As it is the enemy. And here come the ravens yet again, trying to drop down. Not sure about the positioning on those turrets. Actually, kind of difficult to get him into the mineral line there. Shield battery overcharge against auto turrets, so he'll just kill the shield battery, which is a pretty direct solution to the problem. And again, it looks like two ships passing in the night. As Nightmare didn't realize Gumiho moved around the southern side, the Ravens have been distracting him. Storms at the front, the fourth base under attack, everything coming together. Gumiho, does he have enough to actually hold on to this position? There are 27 probes at this base. I think he might be transferring some. But there's not that much aside from the tanks. The bio army? Well, there's actually no upgrades yet. For night. So he's waiting. He's holding. Five seconds until plus one. I think that has to be the timer. Meanwhile, probably regretting the lack of interference matrix, but the storms across the board, including onto the tanks, the zealots will close in and finish the job. A warp prism is taken out, but Nightmare cleans up the army on the ground. Overall, Gumiho's technical army getting dismantled by the, the brute force of Nightmare. As siege tanks are good, but you need enough to cover them, and that was a pretty weak concave overall to use them with. Gumiho losing out on those tanks. He's building more. And it's not like Nightmare has a decisive advantage, but now he has map control. He has the army that can force Gumiho to back off. So Nightmare can stay out on the map, and he is. Whereas Gumiho kind of has to sit back, and he, he may have to rely on drops in order to keep Nightmare busy. Yeah, Nightmare trying to force Gumiho into a mistake. I don't know if he has... A couple storms could certainly turn the tide, as storms often do. 
And not really enough medevacs to actually uh, heal up most of that bio army. And Nightmare with a quick transition into Stargate here as he makes double Rupter as well. Making sure he has uh, that later game trajectory. It doesn't get bogged down fighting against the incredibly efficient Terran units. Viking knocks out the Observer. Plus two weapons completed for Gumiho. Nightmare about to complete his. Again, skipping the armor and shield upgrades in favor of hitting a little harder. Second starport for Gumiho. Though, I don't believe he knows about the uh, additional stargates yet for Nightmare. Both sides heading towards a max out. Three carriers in production. There is ship weapons level one and some Vikings out of Gumiho. But I, uh, once again, I don't think this is... This is just something to uh, support the army and help with the Colossi and maybe warp prisms. So Gumiho isn't aware of the massive carrier switch yet. Am I correct? Yes. He hasn't scanned it. He could anticipate it, I guess, but I think you'd see a lot more starports. A nuclear missile just thrown in. Fusion core as well. You know, battle cruisers are pretty decent counter to carriers. All that armor. But again, one, not so great against Tempest, and two, he doesn't know. Will Nightmare be able to get to six carriers? Which is really the number when you, you require Vikings or direct anti-air. Three carriers, the Marines and the Ghosts could easily deal with the Interceptors. But six with upgrades is when the numbers really start to add up. The Swarm. The Golden Swarm. Now who's flanking who? One Disruptor from the north side. Storm's trying to zone out. A couple Zealots slip in towards the third base. Nightmare. Looking for an opportunity. Three more carriers in production. Nightmare is not so subtly kind of trading out his zealots to get um, more carriers in his army composition. Four liberators at a time. Very technically, liberators are not uh, in anti-air mode. Can help clean up interceptors, but... Again, in order to counter the carriers, you have to know they exist. I think Gumio has to start getting suspicious soon. Was that a Ruptor? It was. This is awkward. Um, yeah, well. Oh. Uh, hmm. Anticlimatic. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, uh, the old adage of how do you counter 12 carriers? Which is, of course, don't let them get 12 carriers. Some of the most accurate yet useless tips um, in the history of StarCraft II. Thing is, Gumiho not following rule number two there. In fact, he simply doesn't know. The carriers have arrived, and they're bound to have plus two. Oh my. The cannons locking things down. More command centers. But this will be the grand reveal here. Now, there may be enough anti-air just built into the army to deal with the interceptors. They have to be a little careful because units will prioritize the carrier if they get close enough. The Viking count is quite high. The ghosts as well. Lifts up into the medevac accidentally. We've all been there. Very annoying. Very hard to avoid as well. Anti-armor missile comes through. Dorito dusting the carriers. Mmm. They can't lick their fingers with that Dorito dust because they don't have mouths. Therefore, no tongues. Therefore, we're going to end this entire train of thought and derail it right now. Vikings coming up. Liberators covering underneath. The Interceptor's being flung out, but taking quite a while to get involved in the fight. Disruptor shots chunking up on the ground, but the Vikings are starting to make real dents in the carrier count. 
Uh, a bit indecisive. Gumiho not targeting the carriers, but instead ending up hitting a lot of the interceptors. Vikings getting knocked down, but most of the interceptors are dead, also getting hit by the storm. Backs off. Several of the carriers survive. Misses the shot on another one. A pretty decisive victory for Nightmare, even if it didn't look like it for a moment. As keeping those carriers alive, they will rebuild the interceptors. Nightmare has 186 supply. He just warped in. How many gate? 14 gateways. He's building two more bases with this. He, he controls the map now. Gumiho, not quite able to challenge the carriers. And the momentum is now almost uh, inexorably in favor of Nightmare. God, with that just smooth transition to each part of the unit composition, there was a, it felt like Gumiho had no real opportunity to get anything done. And now, desperate. He has a dream of holding this, but Nightmare is making sure that even if he loses this army, he should have the economy to follow it up. That bio army looking good. One carrier knocked down. There's still one Colossus in the mix, helping out a lot during this fight. And there's just not enough units. Disruptor involved. Fires a shot. Chunks up the rest. And that should do it. As more zealots are coming up, the carrier not taking out Gumiho. Wait. Oh, and that Gumiho drops. Eight. Okay, well. We gotta do this. Dun dun da da. Dun dun da da. Dun dun da da. Dun dun da da. Dun dun Yeah, disruptor shot. Wait, this is where the real action is. Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, oh, that's not gonna turn the tides. Just a blip on the radar here. Still a very difficult position to fight into. Gumiho has taken the income lead off the back of those mules. But Nightmare is able to grind his way through with a well-executed uh, storm into carrier timing. And Gumiho fighting against the storm. Not able to stand up. This was the difference between Nightmare having the right army in the right position for the entire game and being caught once. He plays a very... Uh, he's nicknamed the Surgeon. Surgery is not... is a pretty exact science. Well, at least you hope it is. Um, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on the internet. Uh, so, much like that, if everything goes correctly, Nightmare can work his magic. So we'll see if Gumiho has any plans to disrupt him in game number three, or if Nightmare's the disruptor at the end of the day. <sighs> Interesting series. Feel like Gumiho... Well, uh, what would you change if you knew the carriers were coming? Maybe a few more Vikings? A couple more starports? But he already had a pretty solid anti-air composition. It's just, the fight started off pretty poorly for him, and, uh, about three or four carriers ended up at, like, two or three Viking hits away from death. Uh, which is just a lack of, of target fire there. And that is the struggle with carriers, is, once again, if you're one of those mortals who are not Clem or Maru or Beyond. <laughs> In fact, Nightmare has used the same style against Beyond, who has a uh, almost religious objection to uh building later game <laughs> units that aren't marines marauders and medevacs cyclone on the way it's going to be a twilight council out of nightmare Two barracks, so kind of an anti-blink build out of Gumiho. Nightmare is going blink. That doesn't mean that that blink is is not going to work. It just means that Gumiho should have the tools in order to deal with it. Nightmare now demonstrating why we don't uh, usually actually shade in the adept because a cyclone 
uh, does indeed invalidate every Protoss unit uh, individually in the early game. It can beat any uh, gateway unit 1v1, especially considering it can lock on and outrange them. Siege tank on the way. So yeah, definitely an anti-blink style here. May transition into an attack timing. Cyclone, scouring, making sure there's nothing he needs to be looking out for. Starport halfway done. How many gates? Just two gate. With a robo, so a very conservative. Once a third nexus. Nightmare going for the economy over the uh, early aggression. We'll see if the Reaper gets the info here. If he sees the third base timing, Gumiho may be lining up an attack. I think he's planning on it anyways. Yeah, the fact that the Stalkers... It's, you can't really change the trajectory of the build at this point. Yeah, Gumiho is clearly intending on a Stim Medivac tank timing. And it's up to Nightmare to deal with it. Probe Scouts sees nothing of, of real note. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, the Observer. Oh, it missed it. Oh no. Uh-oh. The Observer was between the timing of the probe coming in. The Observer just a few seconds late. And now the boys are here. Stim is done. He's chrono boosting. He knows something's coming, but he doesn't know where it is. It's already on his doorstep. There's five stalkers and three zealots against this. The tactic boys are pulled. There is a tank. Shield battery is dead. Oh no. Gumiho has picked his timing well. And I think he just, and oh no. It's an absolute disaster. Nightmare tried to have three bases and his tech. And Gumiho just slices off his legs before they can complete the upgrade. Uh, he's trying to come in. He's trying to save his Nexus. The damage is already done. That's it. And Gumiho takes it two to one. Making sure Nightmare can't get to that unit composition. He can't survive long enough to take map control as Gumiho with a knockout punch. Decisive Terran timing. <sighs> Tough for Nightmare. And that's usually how we see Nightmare go down is getting a little bit too technical and just not having enough on the field. But either way, Gumiho powers through. Hopefully it made your day a little bit better. Um, and if you got the means of motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon or, or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Um, and if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for, for streams and more content, yes, even more. There's only so many hours in the day, but we fill a lot of them. Uh, you can find it in the description. And if you're looking for more casts, be awesome if you click on the recommended, which should be like over there, right? Something like that. Um, that helps out a lot. YouTube recommends that I recommend you the recommendations. Moving on. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope I made your day just a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.